Okay, so some of you may have been asking yourself, does sitting in this chair this many hours hurt my posture? Short answer, absolutely. But there's things that we can do to fix it. Today we're gonna to be going over some stretches and exercises you can do to not only strengthen those muscles to help your posture, but also some stretches you can do before, after, and at night that will help you improve the way you sit in the chair, the way you stand, the way you walk, the way you do your daily activities. Now, for what us in the personal training industry can call as posture dysfunction, it can range anywhere from the rounded shoulders, the tight psoas muscle, which are your hip flexors, the pronation in the feet, which can cause change, uh, problems up the kinetic chain, meaning problems in the feet can cause problems for the knees, for the hips, for the lower back all the way up, and then also things that occur like lower back injury or sciatica pain, which we don't want. So we're gonna attack all those different dysfunctions and problems, and we're gonna to try to eliminate that as much as possible and see if we can help you guys out. Stay tuned. So for those of you who don't know, my name is Donald Russell here with DRP Fitness and Health, and we're gonna be talking about some fitness tips. And one of the topics today is how to improve our posture. Now it's important that we bring these up in different uh, split topics, all right? So we're gonna talk about a few different things that, that correlates with our uh, dysfunction and posture. One, which is probably the most noticeable one, is probably gonna be the rounded shoulders. This is one that I normally look for in a newer client or if I'm assessing somebody who's first coming in, the first thing I'm doing is looking at their posture, how they walk, how they sit, how they stand, but most importantly, how are their shoulders looking? All right, so rounded shoulders are typically rounded forward. So if you're in that seated position for many hours of the day because of your job, or just what you do on in an everyday, uh, in your daily activities every day, your shoulders tend to round a lot forward. And that's just come from looking forward, working on the TV, uh, on the uh, computer screen, or just sitting for hours in a day like we just spoke about. So there's a lot of exercises that we need to do to help this. One is going to be our stretches. Now with our stretches, understand where this tightness is coming from. Typically, it comes from a tight pectoral. So these pec muscles here, the chest muscles, they're pulling on the inside of the shoulder, which is causing your shoulders to round forward. So what is one of the first things we want to do? We want to release these. And we can do anything from a door stretch technique to where we bring our hands up into this almost L position and we walk into that doorway so we can help open up that chest. Then we want to go into some strength exercises to help build and improve that posture. And this is where we get into working on the underactive and overactive muscles that we learn about as personal trainers. Now, an uh, overactive muscle is that pec. That pec is so tight and is working too much that it's causing this mid back here to not turn on as much or to what to be what we call underactive. So it's not doing this job or it's not doing this daily function as much as we like. So we want to make sure we strengthen this backside. So that works anywhere from mid rows to where we're working on what's called the rhomboid muscles. It's the muscles right in between the scapula. It's going to pull the scapula back, all right? It's gonna pull that chest back out. So we're stretching here for the pecs to expand us out. We also wanna make sure we're working that mid back to help us expand out. And that's anywhere from our dumbbell rows or just working a mid row where we're retracting back, we're pulling straight back. Now, keep in mind, there's a few things when you're working on pulling exercises, you don't want to raise the shoulders up or have it to where those traps are overworking. So you always wanna make sure you have the traps turned off. And what I mean by that is relaxing, is what I like to tell my clients as they keep pointer. Just relax the shoulders. From here, as the shoulders are relaxed, then we're going to work our pull. So notice the difference between shoulders raised, shoulders raised up and pulling and also shoulders raised down and pulling. Now, as much as we can get into multiple exercises or stretches that we can do, we're going to focus on just doing one for each muscle group. All right. Now we're going to go into a little bit something that's a little bit more common with a lot of people, maybe not from the visual standpoint, but from how we feel it's probably gonna be very noticeable for if I ask a client how they feel as far as the hip flexor. And that's gonna be our psoas muscle, which is normally a tight muscle because of our sitting for long periods of hours. All right, now with that psoas muscle, let's talk about it. This is our hip flexor muscle. So if we're in this seated position for so many hours, 
at work or just doing our daily activities. Understand there's a muscle here called the hip flexor that works its way all the way to the lower part of our spine. So if we're in this seated position for so many hours and we're just flex, 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 and next thing you know, when work is over or we're leaving, we go and we get into a car, drive home, flex, 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 and then all of a sudden we get home and then we're doing the same thing. We're always in this seated position. So this muscle is always extremely tight, this psoas muscle. So we wanna always do what first? Stretch first. Okay, so when we're talking about stretching the hip flexor or the psoas muscle, we have, to be, we have to understand that there's two very important factors before we get into the stretch. One is going to be to put our pelvis, our hips, into a neutral position first before we actually get into the stretch. So what you would see is a lot of people get into this stretch and they just completely start leaning back forward. This is not a good movement because our pelvis is, is in what we call a anterior tuck position. So just think, if this is our pelvis, our hips all the way around, when we get into this position, if we have tightness in that psoas muscle, our hips are already pointing forward, or pointing downward, I should say. So that means if we have that arch, the front of our hips are already pointing down. So before we actually get into this stretch, the first thing I need to do is put it right into that neutral position. So I need to be here. I'm already leaning forward. I need to tuck the hips. Once you actually tuck the hips, you should immediately feel that stretch right into the front of that leg. So just below that hip flexor, working this way all the way down that quad. From here, if you feel that stretch and you feel like I can go a little bit more, don't overextend with the back. So don't try to push the hips so far forward to get that stretch. Just slightly roll the body forward. You should feel that stretch and you shouldn't go further than about an inch, inch and a half, honestly. All right, so next we gotta get into the strengthening phase for the hip flexor. And we come to a fun part of what I like to call a favorite exercise, which is working the backside, the glutes. So one of the main reasons why the glutes are underactive is because we're in that sitting position, the glutes are not turned on at all. It's more of a hip flexor um, that's being uh, tightened. But when we stand tall, that's when our glutes are actually turned on. They're the primary function of us standing tall. So we need to make sure that we do a lot of exercises that keep those glutes turned on so it can release the tension on those hip flexors. Now, one of the most common and simplest exercises, which we will keep simple for now, is going to be the glute bridge. So all we're doing is having our hands flat here. I want to make sure I tuck the hips. So I want to think of pressing my lower back into the ground just to activate the core. And I just want to raise those hips up towards the ceiling. Now, I don't want to overextend and I don't want to make sure I'm actually firing the glute. So I don't just want to come up halfway we're getting nothing but quads. So I wanna really make sure I'm feeling the glutes. And if we are having trouble not feeling the glutes as much as we want or we can, then I may add a, a external exercises, which are the bands, or I could go with a straight bar over the hips. So I have function to actually explode and use those glutes to press the bar up in the air. All right, now last but not least is going to be something that's not so much of a strengthening or stretching, but just in an awareness of what's going on when we have a seat or when we're sitting for long periods of time. So when I'm thinking about going to purchase a chair, one of the chairs I bought, which is just a simple chair that I got from uh, Target, it has a little bit of a lower back uh, function to where it pushes in a little bit so it keeps me a little bit more upright. But if I don't have that, which is fine, I love to get something like a lower back pillow just to help me keep that posture more upright. But even if I go a little bit further and I don't have those two things, I'll take something as simple as a towel and I will place it either in two spots for my upper back or for my lower back. And I just place it right behind me just so it keeps me aware of keeping that tension of extending and retracting what we talked about earlier for that mid back, just to keep me more upright. Because what happens is after a lot of hours, we tend to slouch forward, hang out. It's not something that we're purposely trying to do, but it's just almost that we're getting lazy and we're just not aware of those things. So having a little external piece just to give you cues and to let you know almost as an alert, which I've known some people who've actually gave themselves an a alarm or a timer 
to where when it goes off, they know to keep that posture more upright. But a simple towel will also do, and it can help you from day to day basis just to create, uh, help improve that posture. All right, guys, so that concludes this video of how to improve our posture. One of the main things that I've tried to give out or make sure that a lot of my clients take away from is what are we doing on an everyday basis? Not just what we're doing in the gym, but when we leave the gym, what are you doing when you get home? What are you doing when you get at work? What are you doing when you're just sitting in a chair? These things help our day-to-day -day task and it helps improve our posture because sometimes it's about what we do consistently, more so what we just do in that hour of just working with your trainer or when you're just in the gym or going for that run or that jog or that cycle. So it's more important about how are our daily tasks and what are we doing to improve those kind of motions. Make sure you like and subscribe and if you like these type of videos or if you want me to target on certain other exercises or movements, please leave, uh, leave a comment in the box below and I'll make sure to read and try to uh, get some more information and uh, have those videos coming for you.